Hey there everyone, my name is Nathan Nelson and I was recently going through a bunch of my photos when I noticed that I definitely have a bit of a pattern, which is that I have some favorite go-to lighting setups with one, two, and three lights and it got me thinking, why not create a three-part video series showcasing my favorite one, two, and three light setups. So today I'm gonna to show you four of my favorite one light setups, including some overhead lighting, some side lighting, some indirect lighting, and even some shaped lighting. And then in the next video, I'll go over some of my favorite two light setups. I don't know, I think you get the idea. So grab a snack, grab a drink, maybe a notepad, I don't know, whatever you use to best retain this information. But regardless, let's get into some of my favorite one light setups. As stated in the title, overhead lighting is when I place the light slightly overhead of the model and then center the light so that it's basically firing straight at the model from above, either on a boom or an extension arm, and then I position myself to be shooting from underneath it. Now, the trick to making this light look good and not just blasting light right at the model making everything look really flat and boring is how I feather the light from above so that it's still giving me full body coverage, but also adding shape and dimension to the model's face and body. Now, if we look at this lighting from the side, you can see here that I'm using the exact same lighting setup for one model that is standing as well as for one model that is sitting. And the only difference is being the height of the light itself to account for the positioning of the model and that the model on the left is being photographed on a dark gray backdrop while the model on the right is being photographed on a white backdrop. The trick here is the angle and the position of the light where I have the top of the modifier aligned with the top of the model's head and then angled so that the bottom of the modifier is aimed towards the bottom half of her body. Now, this allows the light to travel down the model's body, slowly feathering down the frame, giving me full body coverage. The angling of the light down like this is what brings out the shape in the model's cheeks, jawline and body and is what gives the photo its pop. Now the main thing that you have to watch for is how you are actually placing the lighting because if it's not aligned properly with the top of the model's head, you will lose that feathering effect that makes this style of lighting work. And if it's not angled down, the lighting will become flat and you will lose all of that shape that this light is meant to create. Now as for the modifier itself, I like to use circular modifiers that are 46 inches or larger for this style of lighting, but experiment with whatever you have and see what works. Everyone has their own preferences on gear and in no way do I think you need to use the exact same gear that I'm using to achieve the same results. Now here are some images that I've created with this style of lighting. Now this style of lighting is similar to overhead lighting, but obviously the light is coming from the side, which creates a completely different feel to the images, with a lot more of the model falling into shadow, which of course creates a lot more mood in the photo. Now, one of the main differences to this lighting versus the overhead lighting is that I don't angle the light at all, with it being almost completely vertical to the model. But that also means that you need to be able to hang this light low enough to account for the model sitting on the ground, which is why I ended up hanging the light on this extension arm off of the C-stand, as the base of the C-stand was just too tall. But if you happen to have shorter stands, then this is something that you won't have to worry about. Now, even though I'm not angling the light, I am still feathering it, meaning that I position the model to the back half of the modifier so that the light can travel across her, creating this nice smooth transition from light to shadow. Now, if the model was placed in the center of this light, you would lose a lot of the light that is traveling across her body and therefore eliminate the entire effect that we are trying to create with just one light. So once you have your lighting set and your model positioned, you can create images that look like this. Now an easy way to make an interesting image is by using creative lighting. And one of my favorite ways to do that is by using the optical snoot from StroPro. Now this is a modifier that lets you drop in various gobos to create all kinds of shapes to create interesting images that stand out from what you normally see in portrait photography. And here are a couple of shoots where I was using just this optical snoot to cast some shapes around the model that I was photographing. 
In this first set, I was using a simple circle to frame the model to create essentially a spotlight effect. Now, as you can see here, I have the optical snoot positioned about 10 feet away from the model so that the spotlight effect would be the size that I wanted for the final images. And then that light is about eight feet high so that the lighting is angled downward slightly. Because as I mentioned before, that downward angle is what creates shape in the cheeks, the jawline, and the body. And if you have that light coming from straight on, it's going to give you very boring flat light. Now for this set of images, I wanted the shadow to fall almost directly behind the model. So I have the lighting centered in my frame and I'm shooting from the same position as the lighting. Now this creates a spotlight look that I wanted, but it also creates images that have more of a stage presence than your typical portrait photography. And when you tie all of that together, this is what that ends up looking like. Now to show you how small changes can affect your photos, for this next set, I'm still using the Spotlight Gobo, but I wanted the shadow from her body to be more prominent in the final images. So I brought the model away from the backdrop and then moved the optical snoot over a few feet to my left so that the lighting was coming more from the side. Now I still have the lighting at the exact same height and angled down slightly, but with these slight adjustments, I ended up with images that looked like this. Now, out of all the lighting setups in this video, this one is by far the most involved, but I love the look of indirect or bounce lighting. And in this case, not to sound cringy as the word is definitely overused in the YouTube space, but this is the most cinematic lighting setup out of all of the setups. And I created it using just one light and two V flats. So let's jump in the studio and I will walk you through it. So here we are in the studio, and as you can see, I've got one Godox 8600 Pro firing directly into the white part of this V-flat. Now, if we pause here, I just wanted to talk to you about the positioning of the model. As you can see, she's essentially, you know, lined up right in the middle of the outside of the V-flat. So half of her is, you know, essentially sitting on the white part of the V-flat, the other half is sitting outside of the V-flat. And the reason for that is I want that light to come from behind and wrap around her face. If she was too far into the V-flat, that lighting would fall very flat on her face and we would lose all of that shape. So as we come around to the side here, you can see just from here, you can tell from the modeling light how that light is essentially coming from behind and wrapping around her face. It's giving a lot of shape into the side of her nose, into her cheekbones, into the side of the face that's facing the camera. You're getting all of that shadow detail while still getting this really beautiful soft light that's emanating from behind and wrapping around the model's face. Now a little pro tip here is you wanna give your subject a point to look at. Now, I found that when the model was looking in a very specific area of the V-flat, that's when I got the best catch light, the light kind of wrapped around the face in the most flattering way. It was where essentially I wanted her to focus. So all I did was I took a small piece of gaff tape and I stuck it on the inside of the V-flat to give her something to focus on. And just doing that, it allows you to essentially spend more time taking photos and less time directing your subject as to where to look and why. So just a little quick thing, if you give your subjects something to look at, you can spend more time actually pushing the shutter. So just to break down this entire lighting setup, this is what it looks like if you're using just one 8600 Pro with only one V-flat. The lighting is very contrasty. You're getting a lot of darkness in the shadows. You're losing that detail of the hair, different things like that. It can work in some instances, but it's not the look that I wanted for this image. So I'm gonna bring in a second V-flat here, and I'm gonna put the white side facing towards the model for some bounce. Now what that's going to do is it's not gonna essentially change the shaping of that main light, but it is gonna bring out the detail in her hair, some more detail in her back. You're not gonna lose so much to the darkness while still retaining that really beautiful cinematic style of light that's coming around. It just opens things up a little bit more so you get more detail in the final image. And that's it. I hope you all picked up something from this video that you can use in your shoots going forward. And if you wanted to share some of that work, hit me with links down in the comments below. I would love to check that out. But of course, coming soon will be my favorite two light setup. So click that subscribe button if you don't wanna miss out on that video. But with that, 
As always, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.